these were sent to me by a sharpener. And he says, Bonnie, I'm sending out today two pairs of anvil grooming shears. Customers drop the texture shears. Please try to find and if you have please try to find and you have permission to bend. I've tried to get them to cut, but they're just not cooperating. Please let me know how you make out. <sighs> this is what my life is. People ask me, well, is sharpening hard? Well, for me it is, because I get y'all's stuff. Okay, he didn't say anything about what the problem was with the curved ones, but let's see what we start out with, and I'll let you follow along and see if I can fix them. I don't know. <laughs> so this is a sharpening channel. I have another one that's more for hairstylists or um, more about cutting hair. But this one is for people that are interested in sharpening, who already sharpen, who want to sharpen. And sometimes I get into some problem solving stuff. So let's see what's going on with these. Um, Anvil is a um, decent quality shear. Uh, we get usually a lot cheaper ones coming in. Uh, these are uh, made in the USA. I'm, I'm familiar with the company that makes them. and. Let's see what's going on. Well, they're not catching. They're not making a noise. I sharpened some earlier today, for, but they were some cheap, cheap Pakistan brand scissors. And I could only get them to cut if you put side pressure on them. So these, you shouldn't have to do side pressure. Now these feel good too. Let's see what's going on with hair. Um, we're going to cut some of this fuzzy fur. And we'll hold them this way. Oh! Did you see that? Turn it sideways so you can see what I'm talking about. Look. See? It's not cutting. It just folds. Let's see if I put pressure. If I put pressure, no, it still folds. Either way, I turn it, it folds. Okay. Dad gum it. Okay. Same thing. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah. That just folds. Now, why would they be folding? Okay. Shears that fold, first thing I look at is the pivot screw. Both of these are plenty tight. So that shouldn't be the pivot screw. The other thing that would cause a shear to fold is if the edge is just really rounded over. The edge feels pretty sharp. Little blunt. little blunt. Well, let's just go through and I'll sharpen them and see what happens if I'm doing anything different than he is. What do you think? Which one to start with? Always start with the easiest one first and it's nothing harder than curved shears except for curved texturizers and fortunately these aren't curved so we'll start with the texturizers. Less is more. We know these. That rod line looks kind of. He's thinking they might be out of alignment. I'm going to. These are dog grooming shears. Let's just put a little semi-convex um, edge on them, maybe a 40. Like I said, the less I can do, the better. I imagine these had a 45 in the factory, but I'm going to do a 40 degrees, which is sufficient for most groomers.
Huh, at 40, I should be feeling a burr here. I'm not feeling a burr. Because if he sharpen them at 45, I should be feeling a burr there all the way down. And I'm not feeling a burr in the center. It's a possibility he didn't get a burr. Red Sharpie keeps you honest because if the red Sharpie is gone. And I'm not even trying to convex them. I'm creating a little semi-convex, which I've got. And these teeth here. Nothing funky looks wrong with the teeth. I'm just going to go over the teeth again though. I'm, I'm not going to color it all the way down. I'm just kind of marking one tooth here. I don't think they're 40. I think they're a lot blunter. Check him at 30. Yep. Yeah, usually if there's a folding problem, I'm not going to worry about the ride line so much unless the ride line I feel like was put in at an angle. Um, maybe overly ramped or something. I want something rougher because the uh, um, my potty ought to be using a flat plate too. like this, instead of cutting the burr off on a paper towel, I might actually use this bond paper. I like the way that cut. Fixed it. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Remember how it folded? Cutting. A little bit of catching there. See that? Catches there a little bit. But man, what a little bit was done and how much better they cut. Still a little bit right here. You see that? So we know we're on the right track. I'm going to go over it again, make sure I've got a good burr here at the tip. I'm 
And one way I make sure I have a good burr at the tip is I have it tilted in my clamp down. It's could tilt it a little bit more, but that's probably far enough. Burr all the way down. This is the Warren 400. And I'm moving it back up to 40. Now I could probably go through, take these apart, work the ride line, try to convex it, make them look beautiful. But I think at this point, especially since she dropped these, let's get them to cut. And I've got a burr all the way down. That, I don't like the way that angle changes at that tip. And tilt it a little bit more. Now, if someone were to come behind me and they were another sharpener, they would say, Oh, look, she didn't convex these. She beveled them. Sometimes the trick is to make them cut. That's more important than anything else that you're working on. So, sometimes it's helpful to just go over and smooth it a little bit. So, if there's any kind of roughness here. Um, this is a this is Arcone. You could also use your nail buffer. I know some sharpeners that use that little ceramics hone. It's cutting. a slight catch on that tip. A little bit of a pull at the tip. Okay. So just, just that the little tiny pull at the tip. Nail buffer. I'm using the 3000 grit side. Now I might go to the 1000 grit and just sort of in case there's something right there. It looks like these blades have been ramped down maybe a little bit. I'm feeling something right there with my nail. But I think this has it. Let's see if it pulls. Ah, you see that? I can make it pull if I really try. but I don't know if that was any better when it was brand new. Sometimes leave well enough alone. So I'm going to clean the red Sharpie up here and let's take a look at the other shears. And this is one of those situations where don't overdo it. Don't overthink it. Just get it to where it can cut. Maybe you did it all the right steps and perfect the first time and then it doesn't cut, then go. Semi-convex, a little blunter, fixes a lot of problems. And you know what? That feels sharper to me than it did before, so... Um, yeah. Let's call that one done. 
So this one. I'm not going to take it apart. I'm going to sharpen this blade, which is the easiest one. It's a semi-convex. On a cushioned worn 800 grit. This, by the way, those of you that might be new to my ch channel, this is a Symmec Flat Home. Uh, this is the machine that we sell. It's on our website. I can use it upright or I can use it on the side like I am here. I like it on the side. I can see better. and it's I'm not having to hold a clamp. I can just work with it. But, you know, you're, you're, the way you want to configure it is up to you. Um, this batter guard comes off, so it allows you, if you were doing a really long shear, we have an adapter you'll see in a minute for doing the curve shears. And um, that flat home works really well for me. But and you got variable speeds. You got left and right for left-handed shears, right-handed shears. And it's all USA made. It's sturdy. It's a steel body. Let's do the red sharpie on here so we know what's going on. We'll do red sharpie on both blades. And I like going slow, especially when I'm not sure what's going to go on. The trick if you're doing one of these curved shears, you, you, you tend to do this and take too much off the tip. So just gently, gently. And when you get to the tip, just leave it there. So I've got a burr all the way down. Let's see what that does, just cutting this off and then checking it. I'm going to cut this off on a, this time on a paper towel instead of that bond paper. I don't think it's going to get it because it's not even cutting my paper towel. This one may need bending. So this is my curve adapter. And I'm pulling off the polishing. Putting on a worn 800. And I think this is well worn. I probably need to replace this, but it'll do for now. I need to push this head down a little bit. bother with that now though. Let's slide this off. Now I recently did a shear where I convexed it and it was an extreme curve shear. See I'm not even coming near the edge on this. If you're not getting a burr, you can either go blunter, you can go faster, or you can do a coarser abrasive. I'm choosing today to go with a coarser abrasive. I'm always a little apprehensive going really, really fast with this curb adapter on. So the coarser abrasive, I still don't have a burr back here. Now when I can't get a burr at the tip, tilt it down more. Got a burr all the way here. But I don't like the way that looks. looks pretty scratched up. So I'm going to flip it back to my worn 800. So now let's try cutting the burr off. 
It'll cut. A little bit more cut. Whoa! It cut. See how it cuts tissue. Cuts tissue. See how it cuts hair. Cuts hair. See how it cuts fur. Flip it over upside down. I think the lesson on these two shears is less is more. Um, what's the old adage? Think horses instead of zebras. Uh, they're folding hair. First of all, check the screws. If it's not the screws, then the edge may be, it may not be a, an alignment issue. It may be the edge just isn't sharp enough. And I think my me going over, getting another burr, not messing with the rod line, um, that worked. Now, are these edges, um, it's semi-convex, it's not um, convex. Are they going to make this, them happy? I think so. Um, the nicks are gone. It's there's like a little roughness back there. I'm going back to the nail buffer. But I don't know, what can I tell you there? They're cutting hair now without folding. This one, uh, it, that was such a little pull-up tip. I don't think you, it was anything. Sometimes it doesn't cross over right, but that's not the problem. That tip feels good, so that's it. Hope all your sharpening problems are as easy to fix as these.